Hey, welcome back. As circuit designers, you might have heard about the benefits of negative feedback a million times already. For instance, they make the circuit more robust to variations. They may decrease the effect of non-linearity and disturbances in the feedback path. And even it might be intelligently used to suppress the quantization noise of an ADC as done in Delta Sigma modulators. Well, in this video, I'll discuss about the influence of negative feedback on the poles of a system. I'll try to offer an alternate perspective which might help you to be a better circuit designer. We will revisit the gain boosting technique and develop an intuition about what the negative feedback is doing in that system. With that introduction, let's jump right at the topic. First, let's look at a simple circuit to answer the question that does negative feedback even affect the poles of a circuit? Let's suppose that we have two transconductors of transconductances GM1 and GM2 with the parasitics and load modeled by the RNCs as shown. It is trivial to say that the poles would lie at omega equals to minus 1 by R1C1 and minus 1 by R2C2. Now suppose we connect GM1 in negative feedback as shown. What is the pole location now? That can be easily found by looking at the effective resistance across the capacitor C1. By applying a test voltage at VO1, we see that the GM pulls in a current of GM1 times VT, making it appear like a resistor of 1 by GM1. So we have 1 by GM1 in parallel with R1, yielding a total resistance of R1 over 1 by GM1, R1 plus 1. That tells us that the pole has been pushed out by a factor of GM1 R1 and now lies at 1 plus GM1 R1 over R1 C1. Let's look at this more closely and see what the negative feedback is actually doing. In general, any negative feedback system attempts to drive an error to zero by either regulating some voltage in the case of an op-amp or some current in the case of a transconductor. In the above example, GM1 seeks to drive the error between VO1 and VN to zero, meaning that it attempts to fix VO1 to VN. As you may know that fixing the voltage is called reducing the resistance at the node in our language. So in conclusion, the negative feedback here fixes the voltage which reduces the output impedance and hence pushes the poles away. Note that this comes at a cost of the gain which has been reduced from GM1 R1 earlier in the case of no feedback to GM1 R1 over 1 plus GM1 R1 with feedback. Let's now look at the gain boosting strategy that we saw in an earlier video. If you haven't seen that video yet, I would encourage you to do so before coming back to this one. We saw that the output impedance could be greatly boosted without stacking up transistors. Let's try to analyze what we are actually doing by starting with the simple common source stage. We have this simple current source, but the problem here is that as the drain voltage in the transistor varies, so does its current. So the next intuitive thing to do was to shield its drain by means of a simple current buffer, which is a common gate stage. The hypothesis was that the cascode device shields the drain voltage of the main current source and thus keeps the current relatively constant. Note that we need to bias the cascode such that the difference of the bias voltage and VGS of M2 remains constant. But now what if we want to keep the current variation tighter, meaning that the voltage variation at the drain to be further reduced? Well, that's where the gain boosting strategy came into the picture. The amplifier here drives the error between VREF and VDrain to zero, meaning that it sets the drain voltage to VREF. And by doing so, it makes M1 into a better current source. So that when we look at it from the output node, we see a current 
that is even lesser sensitive to the output node voltage, which means that we have boosted the output impedance. Alternatively, if we look at the drain node, the impedance would be greatly reduced as the voltage over there has been set to VREF, a constant voltage. The more serious ones among you can try applying this concept to the source follower circuit as well and develop a hypothesis of how things are working, meaning what each component is actually doing. Thanks if you made it so far guys. If you like this video, I'd recommend you watch these videos and don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time, peace.